Hey beautifuls, welcome back to Women, Wine and Wisdom. I'm Jimmy. I'm Naomi. Um, and today we are going to be talking about, is it important to be a people's person mm -hmm. or good at your job when in management? Oh, let's, yeah. let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, but obviously, as you know, we love wine. So before we get into that, we're going to be introducing our Australian Shiraz. Mm -hmm. So today we have 16 Little Black Pigs. <laughs> it's a red Shiraz, um, Southeastern Australia. Mm, yes, 14%. That wonderful sound. Mm, that sound. You know, you're about to have a a glass or two. Or two, you know. <laughs> and she'll say the alibi. <laughs> Ooh. I know, I hate it when it doesn't just enter the glass. It just, just, you know what I mean? Trickles down. It's okay though. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. How are we gonna answer this question? How are we gonna answer it? Yeah, um, I'm definitely gonna bounce off you a lot because you're a manager. <laughs> so I feel like it's gonna be a really interesting conversation for the both of us. Mm. Um, me personally, if I had to answer the question straight up, I would personally say it is important or more important to me to be good at your job mm. as opposed to being a people's person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and I think that works on all levels. I don't even think that's just a manager. Mm. I think that's if you're going into the role, um, if you're mid-level, senior level, leadership level, mm. um, or senior leadership level, should I say, mm. it's important to be good at your job. Mm. Um, I think you are the example. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I totally agree. I think as a manager, you definitely have to lead by example. Okay. I think people will look at you as, you know, like you're meant to be the leader. You're meant to be the person that has done it before. They're going to yeah. come to you with questions. And you better be on your P's and Q's. <laughs> you better be ready. Mm -hmm. You better be, you know, you want people to be able to look at you and be inspired by you. Yeah. Respect you. Like gaining respect as a manager is definitely not easy. So, so key as well. Yeah. So, so key, the respect part. Yeah. But one thing I want to touch on, um, mm. on what you just said was the difference between kind of a manager and a leader. So when mm. you, you, I said manager and you said leader, <laughs> and to me, they're two different things. And I know to you, they're two different things as well. 100%. So do you want to touch on that a little bit? So for me, a manager is just somebody who has probably got to that role without having to really, not that they haven't worked hard for it. Maybe they've mm. been in the job for some time and it's been a natural progression route, but they're not necessarily people's person. Um, they're not um, people's, person the people don't love them the people don't, the love, people them. don't love them they've not yeah. been you know like when you vote people into office they've not been <laughs> voted into office you know okay. but like a leader is somebody who leads by example yeah who probably takes a bit more of a backseat approach somebody who will coach you to success mm. will uh, like try to grow you as an individual yeah. pour into you absolutely you know like you have people like you know, I compare it to football. You have like the Messi's and you the Ronaldo's. Football. I do really love football. I roll. But, <laughs> but you got the Messi's and the Ronaldo's, for mm. example. Nobody ever talks about their coaches. Mm. Interesting. Did we hear that? That's interesting. Nobody ever talks about their coaches. Mm. But their coaches are who, the people that they respect who have got them to where they have got to. Yeah. And so I feel the same in the workplace. Your leaders have to learn how to take a backseat approach. They mm. may not necessarily get all the praise for the successes that you achieve mm -hmm. in your role, but... They've poured into you to enable you to get to where you've got to. When I when I speak to my team, I'm usually like, come on, you've got this. I'm yeah. like their biggest cheerleader. 100%. I'm sitting in the background just being like, you've got this, you've got this. And then when like my director comes in and says, <laughs> well done so-and-so for yeah. achieving this or well done so-and-so for doing that or well done for turning that around. I'm in the background just like, yeah, yeah. talk about it. I know what I poured into them. Mm -hmm. I know that my their successes is, is my is my kind of like inherited it's your success. success. Yeah. 100 percent The more they succeed, the more I know I'm doing a good job. If my team That's... are failing, I'm failing as a leader. 100 percent And do you know what? This is time for me to let my manager shine because she's amazing. <laughs> no, no, no. 100 percent She's amazing. Yeah. So I've been managed by a manager previously. Mm. And that person, he was a manager. Yeah. My current manager is a leader. Yeah. And there is a big difference. Mm -hmm. So as you were saying, like she pours into you. So like yeah. certain things she'll be like, let's have an hour session. And she knows I hate the session because <laughs> so we always go between like mentoring and coaching. So yeah. for me, it's easier to receive mentoring. Mm. But what she does is she coaches you. Mm. Do you see what I mean? And there's a difference between the two. I was just going to say, <laughs> Jeremy, tell the people what's the there's difference, difference between, between coaching, coaching and managing and um, being a mentor. It's difficult because like mentoring, you kind of just go to them for advice. Mm. Right. Whereas my manager, she will ask me all these questions to make sure I come up with all the answers by myself. 
Mm. And you know what's so funny? We talk about it as well because she knows it makes me feel so uncomfortable. <laughs> but she's like, you're going to grow from, like, you're going to grow from this. Yeah. Again, yeah. not only do I, would I go to her for, you know, if I need something, mm-hmm. even personally, professionally, I could go to her because she's somebody yeah. I look up to, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, 100%. Um, but like my if she too, doesn't yeah. know the answer to something, mm-hmm. she's going to find out the answer for me. Yeah. Do you see what 100%. I mean? And th- I feel mm-hmm. like that's the difference between a leader and a manager. Yeah. Um, and I would also say she is good at her job, mm-hmm. but she's also a people's person. Yeah. yeah. Do you see what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really respect her for that. Because mm. some people, they're just good at their job and they have no people skills. Yeah. Other people are people's people and to be honest like there's a job description for a reason um do you know what I mean sorry there's probation periods for a reason that's just the way I 100%. see it <laughs> I can't even lie to you um so yeah no 100% so just, she's gonna watch this by the way no <laughs> so yeah just to piggyback off of that as well to be fair my manager is fantastic she yeah. is amazing she pours into me massively 100%. she always has time for me yeah. and you know, like you said, she's very personable. She is probably somebody who is, she's not that she's probably, she is very direct. Okay. She's going to give it to Sounds you. Sounds like with me. No, <laughs> Listen, there's no sugar coating on anything she says. Yeah. She's going to tell you how it is up front. But I respect that. And I think yeah. sometimes when you're, you know, going to interviews and you're choosing a company that you want to work for, more time you'll be interviewed by the manager, like mm. the person at your, you know, your direct line of report. And it is so important. I always tell people, when you go into interviews, make sure you go in with questions. And I'm extra. I go in with about 20 questions. Of course you do. (laughs) I go in with three, but obviously Naomi would have 20 questions. I go in with 20. Like, because for me, it's important. I'm not, you're not choosing me. I'm choosing you. As well. So I feel like it's so important that I ask the right questions that are right for me. What do I want out of this job? It's a conversation. Yeah. It's not an interview. I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to find out what it is that you can offer me as much as I can offer you because I need to sell myself as a person and know what I can bring to the table. And I know what I bring. Do you know what you bring? Mm-hmm. Ask yourself that question. So <laughs> <laughs> I think um, for me, when I um, was interviewed by my manager, we actually, you know, we she asked me a few technical questions. But then mm-hmm. after that, we just got into a conversation about, us as as people yeah and have what kind of working styles we like and things yeah. like that and i think a lot of people miss that trick when they go into interviews because it's very important to be able to have a conversation with a person you're that's interviewing you because you want to know is this somebody that i can respect is this somebody that i look up to is this person that has good morals and values yeah, absolutely. is this somebody who you know i feel like i'll be able to talk to mm-hmm. because you're gonna when you go to these interviews when you go to these companies you're gonna have more than just you know oh, you need to do this and you need to do that. You need to be able to feel like you can trust your manager. You can go to your manager. And my manager is very big on don't air your dirty laundry. The way she treats her team is the way she treats her family. So she'll say things like, if another team come and say, oh, your team haven't done this properly, she's going to defend you and be like, no, no, no. We've, you know, we've done what we're going to do. Like, you mind your team, I mind mine. Then she'll come back. Once the door is closed, she'll come back. (laughs) You don't need to fix up. Like she'll <laughs> gather us quickly. So, but I can respect that. I think for me, I've worked in industries where managers do are not transparent. They're mm. not upfront. They don't, yeah. you know, they don't have that personable, that per, personable, <laughs> pers, pers, persona. Hey, Jesus, personable, you, personable. Yes, they're not personable. Yeah. Imagine, I actually said in one of the conversations that I'm a personal, per, personable person. I can't <laughs> say the word. It's the wine, guys. It's the wine. Yeah, I feel like we should have a sip. Just a little sip. <laughs> Just a little sip. But, um, but I think ha- being a really persona, per- ah, you know what? I'm just going to leave that word alone. Being a people's person can can have its benefits because it's important to be able to feel like you can come to your manager, you can talk to your manager. Yeah. I get to know my team. Mm-hmm. I get to know them. And I'm big on strengths and weaknesses. So I yeah. get to know them as what are their strengths. If I know that um, what motivates you is money, I'm going to try to like incentivize you with money. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try to push you so that you can produce and be the best person you can be if you know you're going to get maybe a bonus at the end of it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, so there's an incentive. There's a benefit incentive. for you. It's, there's a benefit there yeah. for you. And then on the flip side, if maybe your progression is to maybe elevate to the next level or to want to learn more, then I'm going to use that as an incentive. If you work hard, this yeah. is the result you will get. So I think there needs to be something tangible at the end of it that they know that they're working towards. Yeah, Okay. What about just respect? Because Ooh, me, that's not easy. Yeah. What about that's just respect? Because for me, at the end of it, mm. I always say um, I'd rather be good at my job mm. um, and people know that I'm good at my job than just being a people's person. 
And mm. my role actually does entail parts of being a people's person. Mm. But there's elements that you can kind of turn on and turn off, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And yeah. I do feel like there are some roles, e.g. HR, yeah. where you have to be a people's person. Ooh. That's where you're, it revolves around you being a people's person, you know? Yeah. Even social work, for example, being a teacher, being a people's person is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But on top of it all, mm -hmm. for me, I would say respect is the big thing at work. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can actually really get that much respect mm -hmm. is if you are good at your job. Because when they mm -hmm. um, put out job ads, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a job description for a reason. They don't yeah. say, you know, it's like being in school. It's like, yeah, everybody wants to be friends with the class clown, but when mm -hmm. you want to do um, coursework, are you going to that person? Mm. No. You see what I mean? And in order to get respect, you need to be able to do the things yeah. that you're telling other people to do. Mm, come on. Yeah. Come you on. Because if I'm coming to you for advice, mm -hmm. I wouldn't like, for example, I wouldn't ask somebody um, to go to a destination that, they, that they've never been to. So like, mm -hmm. maybe let's say, you know, we talk about, talked about this the other day mm -hmm. uh, in terms of being married, for example. Yeah. If we wanted to talk to somebody about marriage advice, am I going to talk to my single friends? Or am I going to talk to somebody that's married? No. Nah. Yeah. You're going to talk to somebody you're gonna who's talk married. To you're going to talk married. to somebody yeah. who's been at that destination. Yeah, yeah. So I know, for example, my manager has been at my destination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can tell by the way she acts and by the mm -hmm. way she, put, like, you know, is about her work, the mm -hmm. work she produces. Yeah. I'm going to go to you when I need advice on something like that. Mm -hmm. And I respect you for that. Mm -hmm. Whereas somebody that's just a people's person for me, it's like, it's great to have you in the office, but when I need things done, you actually slow me down. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> where where because where's the line with the people's people and the I think the yeah. respect of being able to do your job well there is definitely a line I think um if I was to probably quantify it I would yeah. say being a people's person should be about mm, 30 to 40 percent okay so being you're good. putting percentages on it I yeah? will put percentages on okay, it cool. and then being good at your job it makes up the rest because yeah. I feel ultimately I need to it, like, like you say yeah. if you've not if that person has not been at the destination yeah if you've not been where i've been then mm -hmm. how do i know and trust, trust. that you can be like you know be no, good no, at you your job. Reload. Trust. Ah, ah, trust trust trust, trust. trust. exactly <laughs> so like you know because i've worked for managers who i have not respected so have i i've had and one actually only one mm. i've been no, really no, no. fortunate but I've only had one that I, I've, I'm just like, this is not going to work. I've dealt with people in sheep's clothing. Um, mm, <laughs> listen, yeah. But, um, you know, in the interview, and this is why it's very important to ask questions, you know, they'll they'll come off very good. And sometimes they'll act like they know, but they don't. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you might have they might have been hired whilst you're there. But I've worked for managers where I've just not respected them. I've just not trusted them. Yeah. And I know that I could do the job better than them. Yes. And I think, again... That's where the respect comes in. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Because it's like, if I don't respect you enough, mm -hmm. and I know that I can do your my the job better than you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to come to you for anything because you're no. not providing me with any value. No, of course. Do you see what I mean? Of course. And the thing is, some managers, they are, you know, I spoke about it earlier. They're trying to just take all the glory for all the work that okay, you yeah. have put in. Mm. You know, and I talk about, I, I kind of compare it to like steer, like a ship, for example. Like you see the captain at the top steering the ship, mm. but then at the bottom, you don't see all the people that are rowing, all yeah. the people that are putting in all that the coal. Work. They're yeah. putting in the work yeah. to enable that ship to be steered and get to its destination. You only praise the captain. So you have to be very, you know, mindful of um, managers who just want to take all the glory for themselves, mm. even though you're the person that's really putting in all the hard work. Yeah. But yeah, I think respect is very, very important. You have to be able to trust the person that's above you who is meant to be leading your team. Because if you don't respect them, quite frankly, you're just not going to want to work hard for them. Absolutely not. Yeah. I Absolutely not. Yeah. Whereas you do want to work hard for them when you can, you know, when you look up to somebody, yeah, when you can actually get value from somebody. 100%. And this is just even professional and personally, because yeah. even outside of, yeah. you know, even your friends, you want to be able to get value from them. Yeah. There's a reason. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Um, Elon Musk. Hmm. We all know Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> so I think there's a famous uh, like quote that he says. Um, and basically he says something along the lines of every failed leader had something in common. Hmm. What do you think it was? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sorry to throw you under the bus there. I knew, do you know what? I know Jimmy <laughs> well enough to know that that was coming. I knew she was going to throw me under the bus. Um, hmm, wait, ask that question again. So Elon Musk basically says, <laughs> every failed leader has something in common. Mm. What do you think it is? Mm. What do I think it is? They never gave up? That's a good one. I like that one, but no. Uh, they failed forward? 
I love also like that one. That's me. <laughs> That's me that says that. Um, but no, he basically says they couldn't do the jobs of their subordinates. Mm, interesting. So we're gonna take a little wine o'clock <laughs> moment pause. there. A little pause there. So, I feel like I haven't had enough sips yet. So let me. You have haven't. Yeah. Let me you see. I've more. got my little lipstick line. So yeah. I've, I've got, got my little Carmex line. <laughs> Just go on Carmex. Mm. Go on, mm. tell me, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Very strong. Mm. Strong. Overall rating for me, six. Six? Okay. Yeah. And you're a red wine drinker. Yeah, so I'm a red wine drinker. But the thing is, it's a Shiraz wine. I prefer Merlot or Malbec. Mm. So that's what it is. Yeah. Mm. However, six out of ten, um, there's no... There's no sweetness to it whatsoever for me. Quite dry. Interesting. I think for me, I wouldn't necessarily say I think it's dry, dry. Mm. Not dry, but dry. It's, yeah. Mm. It's, it's kind of like if you had a line between dry and, I don't know, fruity. Yeah. I think it would be somewhere, if this was dry, it would be like somewhere here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's... um. It's interesting. I think this kind of wine, it feels very like kind of um, full bodied. Yes. Um, so, that it is. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like because it's so full bodied, it just, it's heavy. So exactly I that. don't think I'd pair it necessarily with anything unless it's something very light, like a snack. So maybe some mm. nuts, some popcorn. You love popcorn. I love popcorn <laughs> with wine, especially red wine. I feel like red wine and popcorn pair very well together. And if you, have watched Scandal, you understand why I say that. So. Can you imagine? I've never watched Scandal, but yeah. Beyond. Just <laughs> absolutely beyond. But yeah. So that's our wine o'clock, guys. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, babe. Oh, let me have a sip just because we did the cheers. Mm. You have to sip after a cheers. So essentially, they couldn't do the jobs mm. of the people that they managed. Mm. Um, and that's what they all had in common. Um, does that surprise you? Um, no, not really. I think it's um I think it's quite an interesting concept, an interesting theory. Yeah. But um yeah, I don't know. What do you think? What's I'm going to flip that. Okay. I'm going to flip okay. that. Do you know why? Because so I was reading because you know I like to read. Yeah. But there was a study in 2017. Mm. And basically the study says there is a direct and significant correlation between socialization, so ex mm. example the people's person mm. and productivity. Interesting. Now, what do you think about that? Because I think that's interesting because I do think, so I would counter this argument and say, you can still socialize at mm. work yeah. and be good at your job and be like personable. So as we both described mm. our managers, they're still amazing at their job and they're still personable. Mm. Therefore their productivity might increase. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Or our productivity might increase even because again, you know, we're social at work, for example, we might have a few here conversations here and there. Mm. But yeah, what do you think? Um, do you know what? It's quite interesting that because my manager, although me and her get on mm. very well, and it's it's not that she doesn't get on with the rest of the team, she gets on with the team. But yeah, I think like she's, I, but she doesn't necessarily like, she wouldn't necessarily always go out for drinks with everyone. She wouldn't like take the relationship outside of the office. Yeah, And it's that whole, it kind of goes into that whole thing of, can you be like, oh, what was the question I was going to say? I lost my train of thought. It'll come back to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so when it comes to, um, like, can you be friends with the people in your workplace? I know both of us have mentioned that we get on really well with our managers, but could you be friends with the people outside of your workplace? So would you have them on your WhatsApp, social media? Would you, would you go to that extent? You know what? That's a very good question. And mm. for me, it completely depends. Mm. So... As I said to you before, like I have had one manager that I didn't respect, right? Mm. So all of my other managers, so for example, you know, I used to work in a school. Yeah. I still talk to those, all. I still talk to all nine of those <laughs> men that literally was, that worked with me because they were yeah. all above me. Um, mm. I started at 23 maybe teaching. Yeah. They were all like assistant head teachers, head of departments, mm. um, things like that. And I still mm. talk to all of them. Um, my other manager in my old place, like I spoke to her on zoom mm. or teams the other day mm. my one of my other managers we speak on whatsapp very regularly okay you see what i mean and my current manager she's amazing mm. so like 
even if I, for example, if she was to leave this workplace or I was to leave this workplace, she's somebody I would keep in my life because she adds value. I was just going to say that. Yeah, she adds value. So the people that I've kept in contact with ha always add value. So to me, if you know me as well, because <laughs> again, I don't talk to everybody. I don't talk yeah. that much, even though I talk quite a lot now. But yeah, I don't <laughs> talk that much just naturally. Um, mm. Unless we're like really, really good friends and you know me personally or mm. you've known me for a very long time. But there are certain people that I would definitely pick and be like, you add value to me in a mm. way that, you know, I, I don't get from anywhere else. I'm going to keep you in my life. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So do I want to be friends with everybody? Absolutely not. But that doesn't necessarily mean just professionally. That's personally as well. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Um, if I can keep you in my personal life and my professional life, it's a bonus. Fine. I was just going to say, because then that kind of... I'm not going to give too much yeah. away because we're going to talk about networking in one of our other episodes. Yes. But it's almost, it kind of bounces off of that because sometimes in a workspace, you might meet people who you feel, do you know what, we have a lot of common ground with. And yes. from a networking perspective, I know why I'd keep you in my life because you can add value. Absolutely. You can maybe help me get to certain heights, get to certain levels or you know, going back to respecting your managers and looking mm -hmm. up to them, you know, you inspire me. And so, I, you know, I want to be mentored by you or coached Absolutely. by you. And so I think, yeah, I think I think it depends because I think for me, um, with the people that I manage, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm friends with. I try mm -hmm. to keep a boundary there where it's like, yes, okay. yeah, so mm -hmm. it's like, you know, when you, if you need to come to me for something, yes. because I'm still human, so there might be something, you know, you don't want to, I don't feel like as a manager, you should necessarily be so emotionally, you know, invested in your team. I need to kind of clear that up. So basically, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily come to them and be like, oh, do you know what? My friend got on my nerves. I wouldn't talk to them about things like that. Yeah. There needs to be certain boundaries. However, yeah, with I my manager, with that, like, you know, I respect her and, you know, I... Um, I look up to her and so for me I can speak to her about certain things that might be a bit of blurred lines but I think to my team I wouldn't necessarily go to them mm. and be like oh you know xyz xyz because I need to I want them to respect me from a professional level and it mm. should really be about the job and be about the work yeah um, and so I think in order to kind of keep it there you need to they need to kind of see you and look at you and respect you and it's so interesting because I agree. Yeah. I do agree to a certain extent. <laughs> and yeah, it's difficult because mm. sometimes showing that you're human is a good mm. thing. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Let me just say, I mean, I will talk to them and say, are you guys watching Love Island? Like I might say yeah. something like that. But that's and we can surface talk about it. Level. But very surface level. That's surface and I think level. that's how I keep it with my team. Unless they come to me with mm. issues that yeah. I can... Co I can coach them. I can talk to them. Like they might, one of my team members, he literally talks to me a lot about his partner or, mm. you know, how to buy a property or how to, you know, ways of saving or just various little life things. Yeah. So not necessarily always about the work. It might yeah. just be about general life, but it's because he respects me and he looks up to me. And yeah. so because of that, we can have conversations about things like that. And it's still, in my opinion, I'd consider that surface level because mm -hmm. I'm not delving into everything. I'm basically just teaching him about some of the things that I've gone through and, you know, how I would navigate around certain things. If he's having questions about his girlfriend, then we can talk about things like that. Um, you know, so it's very, yeah. But I mean, ultimately, mm. I wouldn't necessarily go to my team and be like, hi guys, so um, I'm in the process of doing this. What do you think about this? And no, no, no. I kind yeah. of feel like it should be one-sided. The scale should almost be pointing towards your manager as someone you look up to, not somebody who so you coach. I'm going to challenge that because, mm. again, Let's hear this. <laughs> you know I love a conversation. So, yeah. okay, what about mentoring up? Because I feel like, again, me and my manager have a really good relationship. And a couple of months ago, it's funny, funny, because she told me off about at work about something. <laughs> and she was absolutely in the right. Don't get me wrong. And I think I've told you about this before. Um <laughs> And in my head, I could feel like, I'm like, she's absolutely right, but my ego wants to kind of fight it. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Ego in the workplace. And so when, and when that happened, what happened was my professional barrier came up. Mm. And then when she spoke to me later, my personal barrier came, my professional barrier came down and my, profe my personal came up. Mm. And this is the difference because sometimes you have to be able to directly relate to yeah. the person that you're speaking with. Mm. And when you're having surface level conversations, people pick that up. So for me, mm. I don't like small talk. 
So if you're mm. a surface level person or a, not you in general, but if mm. you're a surface level person, I might I might not necessarily feel the need to, to indulge deeply in that conversation. Mm. But do I you think, get what I mean? I think for me, it goes back to knowing who you're, who's in your team. <laughs> but what about mentoring up? Because sometimes, again, so for example, me and my manager were talking about um, race and diversity and equality. Mm. And she said to me, oh my God, you've actually taught me something really interesting. Mm. And that's something that you could mentor up. And that's something you can mentor up in the, in the organization. So do you not feel, because again, you have to remember, sometimes people are younger than us, or sometimes people are, you know, below us in a, in a, in a role, but that might be circumstantial. And so they might actually know more or have a particular expertise in something that you don't. Okay. This is a whole nother topic. <laughs> Jimmy, I don't think we have time to get into this. Okay, cool. I'm just saying. But because gen Generation Y makes up about 50% of the global workforce. Okay. Okay. And so I feel like sometimes, and you know, I'm from a Nigerian background, guys. Mm -hmm. So I I am very kind of like old school tradition. Yeah, she is. In. And we've, me and her have spoken about this <laughs> off camera and I've had to check her about this. So but. I don't necessarily <laughs> feel that the young can teach me, but, mm. but, but, but I know that they also bring a lot to the table. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not totally naive to it. And I feel um, that sometimes, especially working with like Gen Y, Gen Z, mm -hmm. you have to understand that they're going to be bringing so much to the table, so yep. much new innovative ideas. You know, you're if you're working with people who are 50 plus, they may not be savvy on things like social media and stuff like that. Whereas you're bringing in new people, new fresh people from, you know, yeah. this generation that can teach you things about social media and what, what platforms to be on. And that can instantly promote growth for the company. So you definitely can't be so pigeonholed to just <laughs> you know not being taught by some of the young 100%. they bring new fresh ideas so yeah. i would definitely i would definitely give you that i think in the workspace that can happen and also yeah. i think they usually say you know with age comes wisdom yes and which, which I think, again i would argue no no no, I, no, no, I, no, no, I, yeah. no no hold on let me land let me land, land, because baby, land. i was gonna say in a workspace um Somebody can somebody can be younger than you, yeah. but they've been te they've been doing that job longer than you. Okay, and so age in the workspace for me doesn't necessarily mean how old you are, but how long you've been doing the job for. So mm. if you've been doing the job for ten years and I've been doing it for five years, well, yeah, like I'm sure you're going to have more wisdom in the role than I do because you've got a lot more experience in that role. Okay. So do you know what I mean? But yeah. with age comes wisdom. I mean, usually it's applied to life, and so. Yes, I'm older than you, so technically I have more life experience and more yeah. life, you know, wisdom. But in the role, you've got more years on me in that particular role. So with age comes wisdom in careers as well. I like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, cool. So in order to kind of mm -hmm. wrap it up, yeah. Um, and again, so do you think it's important to be a people's person? or good at your job when in management. And we're going to say management, sla not slash leadership, <laughs> or leadership. Yeah. Because again, okay, I think there's, they're two, they're managers two and leaders things. are two different things. And yeah. we're definitely going to have a topic on that. Yeah, if I you think guys we should. Hear it. Yeah, yeah, I think we should. We should, because yeah. I've, I've definitely got a lot to say about that. Cause Me too. Interesting stuff. <laughs> um, But I think, yes, I think both of them work hand in hand. Um, I do feel like that one outweighs the other. So for yeah. me personally, I feel being good at your job outweighs being a people's person but i do feel like being a people's person is still very important because you yeah. need to be able to get on with your team you need to be able to understand them understand the way they work in order yeah. to get the best out of them mm -hmm. um but on the flip side in order for the respect to happen in the team yeah you need to also be good at your job like when i first started the role i'm in now i joined at the same time as somebody who was my subordinate yeah but in order for me to get the respect out of her, because she was kind of, uh, initially she was almost like, we started at the same time. So why, you know, how do I, I can't respect you. Like, so she was going above me to go to my director initially. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I've got years on you. And I had to teach her and I had to coach her and I had to prove mm. myself. Coach. <laughs> coach. Coach. Yeah. I had to prove myself in order to gain her trust. So I had to show her that I knew what I was talking about. I had to show her that she can come to me because I know my stuff and I've, you know, I'm put in this position for a reason. And then it started to flip. And then she started to come to me and trust me. And when she got stuck, she knew mm. who, to, who to run to because she knew that I'd give her, um, give her the answer. And if I couldn't find the answer, I'm I will go and get it. I'll go and get it and yeah. I'll come back to you within 24 hours. And so, you know, 
But I think also another topic we should probably talk about is ethnic minorities at management level because that's a big, big thing that's that I'm really, looking at. That's a really, really big topic. It's a big and thing that I'm we looking should at. definitely, yeah. definitely speak about. I love that. So, yeah. So that's separate. But what do you think? What's your kind of response to the question? My answer to the question is, it's more to me, it's more important to be good at your job than a mm. people's person. Mm -hmm. However, there are, as there are aspects of being a people's person that can help you excel yeah. alongside being good yeah. at um, your job. Yeah. However... <laughs> again on there you know because you know me I always think, I'm always like thinking I'm like on the job description there's always something called interpersonal skills right mm, mm, mm. and those interpersonal skills can still make you a good leader as opposed to being a people's person yeah so because there's some people that are not genuinely people's people mm. but are still amazing at their job and they still have the respect of their team yeah and then there are some people again this is where it might be more rounded when you're a people's person mm. and good at your job and you have those interpersonal skills you develop a, a relationship that is personal and mm. professional. Mm. When you're a person that just has good, you're just good at your job, mm. you develop a professional relationship with people mm. and people respect you. Yeah. So I think ultimately it, it kind it of depends where you want to lie yeah. um, and you as a person. I was going to say as well, to be fair, I think a lot more companies, it's definitely like something that they should consider. They need to look into pouring more into their managers. A lot of people just get promoted mm. because they've been in the role for so this long. Is interesting. And not enough people are actually taught how to be leaders yeah. and how to manage a team. Yeah. And so when I'm constantly talking to my friends, a lot of them are like, oh, this bloody manager doesn't know how to... Sorry, I shouldn't swear. Doesn't know how to... Is bloody words? <laughs> I think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> but like, <laughs> this person doesn't know how to manage the team properly. They don't know how to get the best out of me. You know, I hate my manager and things like that. And so I think a lot more companies need to invest in leadership skills developing skills on how mm. to be a good manager yeah. how do you treat that how do you like get the best out of your team basically yeah okay yeah okay so guys <laughs> again we would love to hear from you do you yes. think it's more important to be a people's person or good at your job in management or leadership you let yeah. us know um like comment subscribe we'd love to hear from you and Absolutely. just to wrap it up you know we're going cheers we're going cheers <laughs>